The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by independent research, the most popular West Coast program. In gasoline, you know, it takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Last Curtain. It was like Keith to drop the bad news into the conversation casually, as if it were a moderately amusing story he'd heard that morning at the studio. But to Evelyn, sitting across the table from him in this California sunshine, it was as if a tidal wave had suddenly washed up over the wall, engulfing them both in its effervescent foam, and at last dragging them down across the rocks into the heaving depths of the ocean. They were having lunch, as usual, on the outdoor terrace at Henri's. But this was a special occasion. Evelyn had suggested champagne to celebrate. And after the waiter had brought the sparkling glasses... Now, darling, a toast. To you, Keith, and success in your new role. Thank you, darling. To success, but not in my new role. Keith, what on earth do you mean? Oh, did I forget to tell you, Evelyn? I'm not playing the part. When I got to the studio this morning, they told me they'd seen yesterday's rushes. Seems I'm too old for the character, all that sort of thing. Keith, no. Oh, no, Keith. Oh, yes, my darling. Might as well face it, you know. I'm through. Washed up, doddering at age 45. You're not doddering. You're hard and trim. Ever since you moved into the beach house. Slim as a boy of 20, yes, I know. Except that the bronze body beautiful is not enough, darling. It's the once classical Elwood profile. Oh, the deep lines, the sagging jaw muscles. It's last curtain, darling. It's the end. Fini. Oh, after waiting all these months for a part, any part. Oh, Keith, why did you let me sit here and talk about celebrating? Why? Because I wanted to shock you, Evelyn. I wanted to shock you into doing something about your own career before it's too late. Keith, You I... can do something. You could do something for us. You see, I'm desperate, Evelyn. And believe me, you should be desperate, too. Yes, Evelyn. It's like a tidal wave sweeping up around you, isn't it? Keith is right. Because you are desperate and you can't fight it back any longer. It didn't take you long to discover that marriage to wealthy Spencer Corey wasn't worth the sacrifice of your career the glamour, the glitter, your whole life, Evelyn. And you traded it for a sprawling, sleepy mansion set back among the orange groves just outside Santa Ana. And here is Keith, your one remaining contact with those days that used to be, sitting across the table from you in the sunshine, saying that he, too, is desperate. Keith, uh, I'm afraid. Oh, there's no one out here but us. Now, listen to me, Evelyn. I may be through as an actor... But I could direct Broadway, a play, with you, the star. Just think of it. Keith, please, you know Spencer would never let me and the money. I I haven't a sou of my own. Be your age, Evelyn. You know what I'm talking about. You've been thinking about it all along. I know you've been thinking about it. Keith, Keith. Oh, for heaven's sake, stop acting, Evelyn. I can always tell when you're acting. You hate him. 
Why, you could do it without the slightest flicker of emotion. And the play, Evelyn. Do you know a friend of mine, Perry Dahlgren, has written the play you were born for? Keith, would you help me? I told you I was desperate. Would you do exactly as I say? Exactly. Yes, yes. Then be here, right here, tomorrow night at nine o'clock. No later. I, uh, I have a gun. Shall I bring it? No, 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 I'll meet you. But if something should happen, wait exactly 15 minutes. Then if I don't come, go right to your cottage. I'll get in touch with you there. Oh, then you have a plan. Yes, Keith. I have a plan. Oh, yes, Evelyn, you have a plan. You've had a plan all these months. But you had to be sure that Keith would be there to play his role before you dared lift the curtain. And the next evening, sitting in the library after dinner with your husband, Spencer, you see it all in your mind. Spencer, if you don't mind, there's something I want to talk to you about. Does it have to be now, Evelyn? You know I've got this confounded speech to write. Oh, yes, a speech for the Orange Growers Association. That's infinitely more important, of course, than the welfare of your own wife. What? Now, what's this about? Spencer, do you remember Keith Elwood? Keith Elwood? No, I don't seem to recall. I introduced him to you at the Shelby's. He's an actor. Evelyn, if this is another way of leading up to going back to the stage... No, 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 please listen to me, Spence. Keith phoned me yesterday. I, I had lunch with him. Did you, Evelyn? Spencer, I'd rather cut my heart out than to have to tell you this. No, none of that now. Suppose you come to the point. Well, I... Well, at one time, I thought I was in love with Keith. I I was rather young and foolish and romantic. I wrote him some letters. Rather indiscreet letters, I'm afraid. You didn't. They really didn't mean anything, but they could be so easily misinterpreted. I can't afford publicity. You know that. My position in the county. Well, we'll have to pay. No, 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 I can't let you do that. There's another way. What's that? We can get the letters back. But we'll have to do it tonight. There at this beach house in Cherry Cove. And do we just walk right in? That's why I had to talk to you about it tonight. I happen to know he won't be home until quite late. And you're suggesting that we break in? No, I have the keys. And how did you happen to have the keys? Does it matter now, Spence? I have them, and we're perfectly justified in whatever we do. After all, he's a criminal. Will you go with me, Spence? Yes. Yes, I'll go. I suppose under the circumstances, it's the only thing to do. Yes, Evelyn, it's like the business in a well-rehearsed stage play. And an hour later, as you and Spencer turn off the highway and head down into Cherry Cove, the fog moves up from the ocean like a gray ghost as if it, too, were anxious to play a part in your drama. And as Spencer parks the car off the dirt road not far from Keith's cottage, you note that the clock on the dashboard shows 9.13, and then a few seconds later, you're at Keith Elwood's cottage. Draw the curtains, will you, Spencer? All right. Let's find those letters and get out of here. I don't like this whole thing. Well, I can assure you I'm none too happy about all this myself. After all, Will I... you look for those letters? All right. You watch the highway. I'll start with this desk. Evelyn, that cabinet in the alcove. Perhaps they're in... Well, what are you standing there for? What? Where'd you get that gun? It was in the desk. Well, put it down. Find those letters. Evelyn, what's the matter with you? Put that gun down. No, Spencer, I won't put it down. What time is it? Evelyn, for heaven's sake, what... What time is it? It's 9.17. Now will you put down that gun? No. Not until... Uh. Evelyn. Operator! Operator! Get me the police! Quickly! <laughs> That's right. Now you want the police, Evelyn. And after telling them your story on schedule, you go to the window on schedule and stand impatiently hoping that Keith will arrive on schedule too. Then you see the lights of a car swing off the highway and 
down the road through the fog. You watch tensely until you're sure it's Keith, and then a few seconds later... Evelyn, what are you doing here? Come in quickly and close the door. Well, I waited till 9.50. Spencer. Evelyn, what's happened? He's dead, Keith. I told you. Dead? Him. Here in my house? What difference does it make how or where he's dead? Keith, darling, I did it for you as well as for myself. We're in this together. All right, Evelyn. All right, but we can't stand here talking about it. We've... Got to get rid of... Yes, yes, you're right. But how? Up here. I can take him out those French windows and down... Oh, no, 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 no. That won't work. They'd be sure to find him. Here. You'd better take this, too. The gun, Evelyn. You used my gun. What difference does it make? We can get rid of it. I suppose so. But there's bound to be an investigation. What's the matter, Keith? I... I thought I heard something. A car door. Wait a minute. I'll look out front. You better get ready to pick him up in case... Well, is anyone out there? No. No, there's no one out here, Keith. Oh, good. Now, give me a hand with him. <laughs> Evelyn, for heaven's sake. What is the matter with you? Evelyn, what's going on in here? Officer! <laughs> Officer, he shot my husband. What? He's killed him. He's killed him. Evelyn, you are. All right, not that, ma'am. Well, I... You're the one who phoned headquarters? Yes, I told you they were fighting when I called. I thought you'd never get here. He was going to kill me, too. Is this your husband here on the floor? Yes, yes. I'll watch him, Mac. I'll get homicide. All right, you. Don't move from where you are. So this was your plan, Everett. How can you speak to me, you... You murderer? Allow me to congratulate you, my dear. This has been, by all odds, the greatest performance of your career. It even had me fooled. Mac, look out the windows. Come on, if he gets away in that fight. Don't let him get away. He killed my husband. Out here. There he is. Going out to the dock. What? What? I think you got him. You've got to get him. You've got to. We'll get him, lady, and get him good. When he went through that window, he signed his own confession. Come on, Mac, let's go. With the prologue of Last Curtain, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. Extra, extra, higher octane now in Signal Gasoline. Extra, extra. Extra is right. There's real news for drivers in that announcement. Higher octane rating now in Signal Gasoline and at no increase in price. How come? Well, an important ingredient which controls octane rating is now more plentiful. So Signal Oil Company has immediately increased the octane rating of Signal Gasoline. And when I say higher octane, I don't mean just a little higher. I mean considerably. The result? Now you'll enjoy even smoother, knock-free power with Signal as you breeze up those steep hills in high. This in addition to the quick starting, the fast pickup, and the efficient engine performance, which makes Signal's good mileage possible. So now you have more reason than ever to switch to Signal. Let the performance of today's higher-octane signal gasoline show you why we say, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. Take your bows. Keith called it the greatest performance of your career, and it certainly was. But then Keith played his role rather well, too, didn't you think? Walking in as he did just after you'd called the police to report a violent argument. Standing there with a gun in his hand, dumbfounded when he realized how you'd framed him. Then crashing out through the window to remove the last trace of doubt as to his guilt. Yes, it was an even better performance than you'd hoped. And now with the funeral of your late lamented husband and the bothersome details of the inheritance out of the way, there's only one item marring a future that belongs to you alone. Come in, Lieutenant. You have news for me? Not exactly, but I think you should know what we've done. I'm very anxious to know. Well, it's one of those cases. We searched the beach all the way from Balboa down to Capistrano. Not a trace. We've had boats out probing through the kelp beds. <laughs> He was an excellent swimmer. He might have... Swum around the dock and got into shore someplace? 
Yeah, we thought of that. But people don't just disappear unless someone's helping him. Someone helping him? That's only theory. We'll probably never know. No, the words you've given up, Lieutenant. No, not at all. But I've seen these cases develop before. You can almost feel right from the beginning that they'll end up in the unsolved file. I might as well be honest and tell you we'll probably never know whether he's dead or alive. Yes, that's the one item that mars your future, Evelyn. And after the lieutenant is gone, you pace your upstairs sitting room wondering if Keith is alive or not. And later that evening, you lay in bed with the lights left burning, thinking over what the lieutenant said. He may have had help. Yes, he may have had help. And the next day, you don't set foot outside the house or the next. But on the following day, your maid, Clara, comes into the drawing room. Yes, what is it, Clara? A gentleman is waiting to see you, madam. The lieutenant of police. No, madam, a Mr. Dahlgren. Perry Dahlgren, the playwright? Yes, madam, I believe that's what he said. Show him in, Clara. Yes, madam. Come in. Mrs. Corey will see you. Thank you. Mrs. Corey, I, I do hope you'll forgive this intrusion. What do you want, Mr. Dahlgren? It's about my play, Mrs. Corey. Keith mentioned it to you. Your, your play? Oh, yes. Yes, he mentioned it. I realize this isn't the time to bring this up, but you see, I'm quite anxious about this play of mine, and you, I knew you... You came to see me about your play, Mr. Dahlgren? Oh, yes. What else would I come to see you about? Sit down, won't you? Thank you, Mrs. Corey. It's kind of you. After what Keith did, I, I wasn't certain just how you'd I intend me. to forget this horrible affair as quickly as possible. That's, that's why I plan an early return to the stage. Your play, is it a good one? I can't be modest about it. It's just the play you were born for. Really? Keith said that it's... You've seen me on the stage before. Oh, yes, many times. I lived in New York for many years, you know. I went to all your plays. How nice. Mr. Dorgan, would you care to stay for tea? I know we have so much to talk about. Of course, Mrs. Corey, I'd love to. I, I can't think of anything I'd like better. Yes, there's so much to talk about, isn't there, Evelyn? And you find Perry Dahlgren a very personable young man, and rather attractive, too. In fact, any doubts you might have had about him at first are soon dispelled by his quiet, disarming manner. In fact, that evening, as you sit propped up in bed, eagerly reading the play he has left for you, Keith is almost entirely out of your mind. And you find it interesting reading as the pages move between your fingers, faster and faster, and the print begins to blur and... Yes, madam. Good heaven, madam, what is it? No. You're sick. No, Clara, get my gray suit. I'm going out. Out, madam? Yes, 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 and tell Frank to bring the coupe around. But, madam, it's after ten o'clock. Will I... you do as I say? Tell Frank to have the car in front right away. I'll drive myself. Now, hurry. Yes, madam. Sit down, sit down, Mrs. Corey. Uh, fix you a drink. No, thank you. Uh, you won't mind if I fix one for myself, then? I do mind. Uh, Mr. Dorgan, just what are you up to? Why, uh, I'm afraid I don't understand. This, this play you brought me this afternoon. Oh, you've read it. Good. Uh, like it? I repeat, Mr. Dorgan, what are you up to? Oh, then you don't like my play. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought it was rather good. Excellent plot. Man and woman plan to murder husband. They murder husband. They're caught. The woman frames her lover, gets away with it. It's quite plausible, you know. It's been done. What do you want? What do I want, Mrs. Corey? I, I want my play produced, that's all. You want the play? You know that's out of the question. Well... Perhaps it's just that you don't like this play. Oh, no matter, I have another. In fact, I think it's much better, really. 
I know you'd like it, Mrs. Corey. It'd be a hit on Broadway. Oh, we might give it a whirl around Connecticut for a bit, try it out and all that. And who would finance this, this play of yours, Mr. Dahlgren? Well, I, I sort of thought you'd be willing to risk it, Mrs. Corey. Of course, I'll have to have, uh, let us say, uh, 50% of the gross author's royalty. 50%. What if the show fails? Oh, it probably will. But then I have lots of more plays. Uh, we can go on and on. You can be both star and angel. I'll, I'll just take my modest percentage. This is blackmail. Blackmail? Why, how can you say that, Mrs. Corey? It's a business proposition. And you know, Mrs. Corey, somehow I think Keith might like that. Knowing that you and I are partners... Well, Evelyn, what was that feeling you had about the tide sweeping up around you and dragging you down? It really hits you now, hasn't it? Keith is alive and Perry Dahlgren is his go-between to bleed you of every cent of that money you wanted for yourself. True, some details of Perry's play were not exactly as it happened, but that's like Keith, to be subtle. You're trapped and you know it. And during the next weeks, you fight for a way out. But only one thought occurs to you. Keith would never dare come out of hiding. So it's Perry you have to deal with. Just Perry. And then one night, when he's making one of his friendly calls, the way opens up for you. All right, Mr. Dalton. What is it this time? As a matter of fact, Mrs. Corey, something unexpected has come up. I'm afraid I won't be able to wait for my share of the play. I expected this. How much do you want? Uh, I'm afraid I'll need 5000 5000 You know I can't get that much. The estate is still tied up. Yes, yes, I, I, I thought of that. But your jewelry, Mrs. Corey. Dear Spencer was quite generous with jewelry, wasn't he? Jewelry? Yes, the jewelry. Whatever you happen to have over there in that wall safe, Mrs. Corey, uh, I'm sure that'll do. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it will. I'll get it for you. Do hurry, will you please? Uh, I'm in a bit of a rush, Mrs. Corey. Sorry to have to barge in and out like this, you know, but then, as I said, something came up which made it imper... Uh, oh, now, wait a minute, Mrs. Corey. Put that gun down. You'll... No, Mr. Dalton. I won't put it down. You'll never get away with this. Oh, but I will. They'll find you with my jewels in your pocket. A burglar. You see what I mean, Mr. Dahlgren? But you can't. You can't do this. Can't I? You're quite confident you won't fail this time, aren't you, Evelyn? Now you'll call the police and tell them about the burglar and how you had to shoot him in self-defense. But before you do that, you've got to set the scene again. So you hurry to Spencer's desk, pull out the drawers and spill the contents all over the floor. You rush to the small cabinet near the window and do the same. Then the bookcase. For the next few minutes, you busy yourself placing the jewels in Dahlgren's pocket and adding as much confusion to the scene as possible. And then you go out into the hall to call the police. But before you can pick up the phone, the doorbell rings. Yes, Evelyn. There's someone at your front door. A rather inconvenient time for callers, isn't it? But you've got to answer it. You've got to get rid of whoever it is. Oh, Lieutenant, I, I was just I going... I have some news for you, Mrs. Corey. News? Yes. We found Keith Elwood. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Those of you who heard the Meredith Wilson show, Canada Dry Sparkle Time, last Friday evening, heard Meredith deliver a really fine tribute to service station operators, which went something like this. Here's to those friendly guys who fill your radiator and your battery with free water, your tires with free air, 
clean your windshield and furnish your maps and convenient restrooms all without charge, even though you don't buy a thing. And then cheerfully say, thanks, come back again. Well, Meredith Wilson also brought out another particularly interesting fact. In a recent nationwide survey, to find out which employees reconverted to courtesy the quickest after the war, folks named service station operators eight to one. <laughs> well, judging by the enthusiasm he put into it, I couldn't help thinking, Meredith must have had signal dealers in mind as he said this. You see, Meredith Wilson has been a good signal customer for ten years, ever since he was one of the stars of that other popular signal oil program, the famous Signal Carnival. Thanks, Meredith, for a swell tribute about a swell bunch of guys from a swell person. And now, back to the whistler. So they found Keith Elwood, Evelyn. Yes. And you wonder just what he's told the lieutenant. And what of your burglars sprawled out dead on the floor of the library? You'll have no time to rehearse this scene, Evelyn. You're on stage now. The spotlight is on you. And you've got to perform as you never have before. You... You say they found Keith, Lieutenant. Yeah, we sure did. Did he tell you... He didn't tell us anything, Mrs. Corey. He couldn't. He had a couple of police bullets in him. We found him buried under Perry Dahlgren's beach house. Buried under... And he's been dead all this time. That's right. The surgeon figures he couldn't have lived more than a few minutes after he crawled out of the water and across to the beach at Dahlgren's place. But he must have lived long enough to tell him... Tell him what, Mrs. Corey? You know, there are still a lot of angles to this case we just can't figure. What do you know about this Perry Dahlgren? Me? I... I don't know anything about him, Lieutenant. I I only heard Keith mention him once or twice. Then you've never seen him. I... No, I... Mrs. Corey, what is this? What? What do you mean, Lieutenant? I mean, we didn't want to alarm you, but with Keith not accounted for, we figured we'd better have a man keep an eye on your place. He phoned a report to me every time Dahlgren has been here. I... And he phoned me again just a few minutes ago, Mrs. Corey. So we know he's still here. I'm sure you want to see this thing cleared up as much as I do. So do you want to call Dahlgren out of that room? Or do we go in and question him together? That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at 9. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Mary Lansing, Joseph Kearns, and Edmund MacDonald. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen, based on a story by Gene Fromhers, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.